Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Big hello to the new subscribers. Thank you for joining us for sure. Um, we're going to get back on this 35, Evan Rude, mid-80s, something around there. It's tired, it's salty, it's sticky. A um, little bit of sputtering here and there and that kind of thing. And we're going to try and get this thing straightened out, make it better anyway. Um, but... And then I got some other things I got going that we'll touch on. I'll throw in this video. So, but first we have to do this. It's important. It's important. We have to give some prizes away. That's what I said. We got to give you guys some prizes. Um, as you can have seen in my videos lately, I've been, you know, kind of highlighting the super clean products. And one of the reasons why is the fine folks at Super Clean don't want me to be the one that tries them. They want you to be the one that tries them. So, we're going to give some lucky subscriber this right here. Um, a bottle of Super Clean, pump spray, and a bottle of the Super Clean aerosol. So, um, but that ain't all I'm giving away. Because I told you in a video or two, Ago, I was going to give some other stuff away. Look at this. It's a big giant brown bear footprint. Claw? Foot? I don't know. But. It's got a beautiful brown bear in it. It's got a salmon in it. It's got some spruce trees, some bald eagles. And the bear got a salmon in its mouth. This is, it's got some real pretty wood on it. I can tell the, the back looks like mahogany. And it says right there in the back, there's a little story on the uh, folks who made this. It is made here in Alaska. And it is handcrafted. And the person who carved it and all actually initialed it on the back. So, it is an authentic made in Alaska uh, item, and I'm going to give this to one of you subscribers as well. So, Super Clean's going to help me out to give you some stuff, and then I got that right there on my own dime, and I want to give it to you too. So, what do you got to do? Of course, you got to do something. You understand? I want you to comment on this video. Right down there, you got to put a comment, and I want you to tell me. It don't have to be yours, but I want you to tell me what you think is the worst outboard you ever had to, de to deal with. Don't have, like I said, you don't have to be the owner of it. It could have been your grandpa's. It could have been a friend's. But just tell me in your comments below what you think is the worst outboard that you know of, that you've ever had to deal with, or that you just think is the worst outboard ever built. So you got to comment on this video, and then you got to tell me if you're from the U.S., you got to tell me what state you live in. If you're from a different country, you got to tell me what country you're in. You'll understand. And then I'm going to send you some stuff. That's what I'm going to do. Somebody's going to win it. And so that's what we're going to do in this video, but first we're going to get back on this here. Evan Rude. Abuse. Abuse. It's been abused. So, and it's, it's funny because I've got this one, and then I've got a Johnson that just, I think it was last season, I went through it, and I checked it today out there on my rack in the... The throttle's all sticky and so, but I got to get this one done. Then I got a couple little Johnson, no, a Johnson and an Evinrude 15 that I got to get done. So I need to quit blabbering and running my mouth and let's get to it. Let's go. Okay, I uh, unbolted the carburetor and solenoid that unbolts as a unit. Um, you got one bolt on the side, one that stabs in from the front. And then you've got the uh, riser that comes up from the throttle 
you've got those two screws and the two little clips that hold that there. But as you can see, the stator and everything on this thing moves really free. So the stickiness is in the tiller. It's in the handle itself, somewhere in the gears, all that nasty yuck that gets in there. So I'm going to clean that up and see what I can get as far as getting it freed up without hopefully taking everything apart, but I probably will have to. And I think the problem is going to be right in here, in this section here. Um, that's where it's at a lot of times. Real pain. But we got the old copper reap off. I got it on the bench. We'll go through that here in a minute and see what all we can do to get this thing loosened up. I'll be back. Okay, I'm going to show you what I did here. And this is a little uh, shortcut, workaround, cheat, whatever you want to call it. Okay, I took off the carburetor. I took off the starter so I could take off the carburetor. And then I checked the stator up under there and the cam advance, the cam roller and all moves easy. But it was all sticky in here, all sticky in here, all sticky in here. And... I'm not going to take all this stuff all the way to the tip of the handle off because this is a very old, salty, rusty outboard. It just is not cost effective. So is there anything you can do to kind of work around a real sticky, salty throttle? What I did was took a drill. I drilled two holes here. One, two. Okay, I drilled two holes here. One, two right there so I could get cleaner in there and cleaner in there I drilled a hole straight up under here which you can't see to this knuckle then look at the size of the hole in this oil zerk here I drilled it out much bigger so that I could get cleaning fluid in there then I just took you can take whatever you want some kind of brake clean, high powered brake clean, intake cleaner, whatever, an aerosol that you can get. And then I put it in those holes right in here. And you can see it comes out from under there now. Okay, same here in that hole somewhere. There's a hole in there trust me it's there there it goes so it comes out it cleans that knuckle same with these back here you put it in there and get that old grease salt and everything out of there and then here I drilled this one out so that I could get this nice I can do it in there and then I got a hole coming up under there so hose that down get all that old grease out of there drill you some holes let that stuff flash off. That stuff evaporates really quick. And while you're doing that, you work the throttle back and forth, back and forth. I got a pair of vice grips on here. And you can see it's already very easy. So now after I use the intake cleaner, brake clean, whatever I'm going to use to get, you can, you can see it dripping off, off of that there. And that's what you want to do is get that old salty grease out of there. And the reason why this engine is not cost effective is because of the overall condition. Even though the power head runs good, um, the fella, I know the fella, he's not going to want to spend the kind of money it would take to make this motor right. What I found is, as I was moving along here, um, if you look at the, the lower motor mounts, <laughs> or lack thereof. This engine, um, the, the lower motor mounts are broke. The upper motor mounts are either broke or all weak. Um, the transom clamps are froze stuck. I'll get them freed up by drilling some holes. Um, so I'm going to clean the carb. Um, I've gotten this getting pretty loose now. And uh, He'll be able to use it. Um, it's at that point to where he's either going to have to spend some serious money or find something different. But um, So I'll let this drain a little bit. 
and then I'll squirt um, spray lube in all those holes I drilled and work it a little more and, and she'll be good and loose. And then we'll get over to that cabarepa. All right, so I pulled the carb apart and uh, it was, there's a little yuck in there and I blew, when I blew through the passages with compressed air, when I blew through here and all, I got a, a little bit of salt come out of there. So I just used a regular old spray intake cleaner and shot it in everywhere and then take a little compressed air Compressionis. Spray everything out. Drop my little washer off there. I got plenty. Um, so, I think that's about all I'm going to try on this one. I mean, the motor was running, so. And everything else on it looked pretty good. Everything looks pretty good on it, so. Let me check that jet there. But, other than that, Check that high jet. I'm just gonna put it back together. I'll blow that out too. Well, I uh, I do with it. I got to looking at this little O-ring gasket that goes around there, and it looked pretty bad. Um. And I don't know where I stuck it, but it looked pretty bad, so I'm going to get a new one. Three, four, three, five, one, two, zero. Look at that. Three dollars and seventy-nine cents for that little bitty, that little bitty thing. And it's my last one. Oh, here's the here's the one that come off. You see how it's just. It's not very good. It's all all compressed and so we take this brand new one. See you know, don't they look a lot better? See the the compression rings on that and everything and these got it's nice. We put the nice. Let's put the nice oh that's gonna be so nice. And then I like to squirt 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 with the little triflo, which is almost out too. I guess I need to go shopping, don't I? I need to get on that pewter and go shopping. So we replaced that. Other than that, I didn't see too much going on. So we're going to put it back together. I'll be back. Okay. We got the throttle all nice and lubed up. Go on, Bumblebee. Boom, 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 boom. You can see the throttles nice and loosey goosey. Lucy Goosey. So, squeeze at the bottom. Oh, let me turn on the sucker. Turn on that sucker.
Okay, so I did get these transom clamps. Both of them are nice and loose. I got this one holding it right now. But uh, I got them all freed up. I got this throttle loose as a goose. But now look at these motor mounts, these upper motor mounts. It's a jiggle 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 jiggle. Well. Pop, 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 pop. Well. It does run better after a good carb cleaning. Um, when I blew compressed air through the needle seat after I took the float and needle out, I hit some uh, compressed air through that and then through the emulsion tube. And when I did, some salt, literally hard, dry stuff, come up and hit me in the face. So there was a little yuck in there, and it, it shows. It runs uh, a lot smoother, idles a lot smoother. It's got one broken upper motor mount. It's got both broken lower motor mounts. Um, that's not good, but when you do this, for, I actually put this motor together many years ago. Um, I put electric start on it and so forth, and uh, and who knows what else all I did to it. I know I, I built it out of different 30s and 35s and so forth. Put it together for him. He's had it for quite a number of years, over 10 years, and it's been running good for him. It's just getting old and tired. Like I said, he is a professional hunting guide, and they are known to, let's say, abuse outboards so uh this one's a little tired you know he's at that point i got it where it runs good it idles good starts pretty easy um i didn't even try the pull start um we should probably do that but uh it runs pretty good and it's just at that point to where you're gonna have to spend some money um to see if he wants to to put the money into it or go for something newer but uh, I've got it at least cleaned up and the throttle that that little system I showed you by drilling the holes right at those bushings where those nylon bushings and all are in the engine where you know where the throttle rods come through and, and twist they get all gummed up with old grease and salt and over the years that stuff gets hard as concrete almost and if you'll drill them holes like I showed you and get you a good solvent type stuff like brake clean or that of your choice and get some of that old yucky grease out of there do that a few times put a pair of vice grips on the end of it and work it work it work it and then get some lube in those same holes you'd be surprised they'll loosen right up but first you have to at least undo the engine enough undo the riser anyway that goes up to the bell crank that advances the stator and the, the cam follower for the car. You've got to make sure it's not the stator plate and the friction ring under there that's all gooped up and gummed up. They do the same thing. On this one I got lucky it was just in the tiller handle just the rods going through the bushings everything was all gummed up. Cleaned it all out, drilled some holes. I will point it out to the owner that hey squirt some lube in here every couple of times because you know he's going to do that, right? Of course he is. And uh, I'll point out what I did. And I took all the Kona cutting uh, tricks I know to get this thing done for him on the cheap and at least usable for this season. So that's where we're at on the 35. And let's go ahead and try that pull start. We need to make sure that works too, I guess.
The old girl's just a little tired. So the recoil start works just fine. Electric start works fine. Shifts, P's, throttles nice and easy. Um, so I can call this guy here, let him know what he's got, and I'm sure he'll be happy with it just like it is. Just rough, you know. Um, yeah, well, your throttle right. was all. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, they, they, they really get hard. they get all these fittings all the way up the riser. It's all full of salt and grease. It's all. And then when you bring neutral. somebody came a bear in the gifts so it's Christmas time in June what did they bring you are asking well I'm gonna show you a cutie you want to see a cutie no I ain't gonna dress up in a wig I'm saying do you want to see a cutie somebody came bear in the gifts let's look at this cutie Ain't that a cutie? And you're like, but you didn't dress up in a wig with jewelry. That's because I'm not saying QT. I'm saying QD. If you can see it, I don't know, but it says right there. QD. 11. Cutie. Ain't that pretty? So, fella stopped in, said he watches my channel. He said, look at that. Look at that. Wow. Look at here. Look at here. And yes, it turns over. A QD11 Johnson Seahorse. So, he said, I watch your channel. I see your videos. And I thought maybe you'd want to fix it up like you did them ones out there. And I said, oh yeah. I want to fix it up. Ain't that pretty. And it, it goes in and out of gear really easy. And I mean, this, this shifter works. And it, it works nice. Yeah. I have to turn it with the prop. But there you go. Goes in and out of gear. Everything's pretty neat on it. Got the instructions. It's not all froze up. I'll have to look. I'll be honest with you right off, right off the bat. I, I don't know what year it is. QD. I don't know what year. But I know it is a pretty little outboard, and that is one that I would like to get running. Maybe put them Nova chips in there. Maybe put a fuel pump on it. I don't know. I don't know. But ain't it pretty? They came bearing the gifts in June. Alrighty. Here's our next little victim. I've got this one and another one just like it that's an Evinrude. And I think this one's supposed to have 
cooling issues. We'll find out, because you're going to see what I'm going to see. I hooked it up. It's in neutral. Pull the choke. See what we get. Let me turn on the sucker. So, uh, that's going to be a wrap on this one until I get the next one in here. So, it'll be in here shortly. And uh, as always, that's one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.